What is up, disc golfers? Today on Iceberg TV, we have a very special guest on the channel, Tai Relados. Tai is my Berg's Bag sponsored teammate, and he's living and playing disc golf in Alaska, and he is the most passionate disc golfer I have ever spoken with. Tai loves disc golf more than any other person I've ever conversed with the sport about, and I can't wait for you guys to enjoy the interview. But before you enjoy the interview, go to his Instagram and give him a follow. He is consistently putting out really entertaining, really helpful content for anyone of all skill levels. Tai has huge dreams in disc golf and he deserves all of our support. So head over to his Instagram, give him a follow, and you won't be disappointed with the content that you see from him moving forward. But aside from that, don't forget to the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. You're watching Iceberg TV and enjoy the video. First, just introduce yourself. Who are you and where do you come from? Yeah, so my name's Tai Rolades. I'm a developing disc golfer here in the beautiful state of Alaska. Um, I reside here in Soldotna, Alaska, really close to the historic city of Kenai. Um, and I've been playing disc golf for about one year. And how big is disc golf in Alaska and how did you get started? Yeah, man, disc golf has grown so much in the last year here. Um, I guess just like anywhere else in the United States, um, man, you could almost say around the world, <laughs> disc golf has grown exponentially. Um, in our local disc golf scene, we have, uh, gosh, probably grown at least double. I've seen so many people out um, in tournament play this year that uh, so many of my other friends have said that they've never seen these people um, and they're just they're just getting started into disc golf um, along with myself. So um, disc golf in our area has grown, I would say, quite a bit. And, uh, you know, it's just it's really cool to meet a lot of great disc golfers out in our community and just being able to play with them has been such a pleasure. So, yeah. Now, what do you think it is about disc golf that tends to bring that community together so quickly? I feel like disc golf does that better than really any other sport or activity or hobby I've ever seen. It tends to bring people together in a unique way. Uh, why do you think that it kind of comes together so fast? Yeah, I guess for our area, you know, in Alaska, it's really tough because they're in, especially, um, especially just during um, you know, busy season, especially for Alaskans, it's tour season around here is, is very short for disc golf. Um, and so I guess for, for people in Alaska, we really like to come together and as a community because it's, it's just one, it's one other thing to do besides like snow chewing or going skiing. Cause there's only mm -hmm. one slope that you can really mm -hmm. pay for Anchorage, you know? And so it's, it's just one of those things that I think it's just because of its popularity and its growth. Um, it's become such more of an activity for everyone to get out and enjoy themselves and really get to get to know each other so much more. So, uh, yeah. So it's almost, really it's, it's almost like just a brand new activity. Everybody's done the same thing their whole life and now they have something new that they can sort of obsess over and, and improve at and, and learn to love. Right. Yeah. Big time here especially here it's been it's it's been a, such a huge outlet for people here i know just from my own experience especially dealing with a lot of uh just mental health in our area um it it helps so many people out especially on that on that whole um aspect of their their own their own life and so just such a cool such a cool outlet for people to be able to use to get out get some fresh air just enjoy themselves and just uh just have a good time now I want to I want to talk about how disc golf has helped you personally, but first I want to kind of start closer to the beginning. So you grew up in Alaska your whole life, and your parents have lived there their whole lives as well. Or how did you guys wind up settling in Alaska? Because it's fairly unusual, low population. I'm wondering what sort of draws a family to want to stay there, and not because it's an extra good or an extra bad thing. It's just a unique thing. Yeah, I actually grew up in Oregon, uh, so I was born and raised in Oregon, uh, Southern Oregon, actually. And um, I actually got into disc golf around college, um, and so I was just coming out of college. Um, 
I was in a pretty low spot in my life. Um, I was I was 355 pounds, and uh, it was really tough. I was surprisingly depressed, even though I had a wife, um, and she was very loving. She she's been there for me the whole time. I um <laughs> I watched the whole 2019 Pro Tour within two months, um, oh, wow. and yeah, and because of that, it just gave me this spark inside. Like I something for me just changed. Um, I had so much vitality and enjoyment, and just watching disc golf was something that really got me out of that hole that I felt like I was in. And so um, I decided to try it. So I, I approached my wife and I was like, hey, you know, um, I've been watching this thing called disc golf and it seems really fun. Um, but, you know, it takes some money to get started. And she said, well, how much? How much is it? Has it been? I said, well, I mean, you know, you can get a bag and a lot of discs, but to start off, it's like 30 bucks. You know, you just get a player's pack and and just go from there. She's like, well, let's, let's go. Like, go try it. Have some fun. Um, so, um, so I did. I bought a Dynamic Discs player pack and uh, or starter pack and went out to a huge course everyone talks about in uh, Eugene, Oregon. That's where we originally lived um, together. And so I um, started playing. Um, on my fifth day of playing, I met up with a guy who used to play for Latitude 64. Um he told me, he asked me how many days I've been playing. I legit was counting on my fingers and he had an odd <laughs> look on his face. Yeah. He was just looking at me. I was like, oh, this is my fifth day ever playing. And he goes, oh, you're lying, dude. You're, you're totally lying. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? Um, and he's like, I've never seen somebody come out and throw 300 feet just, just on a win, just on a dime, you know? And uh, I was like, yeah, I, I, you know, I watched all the pro, all the tour and i thought it you know i thought it was fun so i wanted to try it and he says look man um I, please don't take this in a bad way but if you keep the weight i think you could actually make a run in this i think you could make an actual um, you know career out of it he told me um i used to throw for he, he said for himself he used to throw for latitude 64 and um he was a he was a somewhat touring pro and especially a local pro um and uh that put a fire under me right from the start so um started to play a lot more wasn't wasn't developing too much um but then we had an opportunity to come to alaska uh for work um i also you know really love to uh really love to just work out in nature and such but uh, we have a ton of invasive um beetle kill that's going on in a lot of the trees here so a lot of the trees are falling being dangerous around houses so my my brother-in-law uh actually paid for a flight for us to come up here and um gave me a job and so it kind of landed us in alaska and we didn't really think this would be where home was for us but uh we decided to pretty much go back to oregon after a month and we decided hey we're just gonna pack everything up into the xterra that we have our nissan xterra and just drive up to alaska so <laughs> that's so epic yeah. man that's so epic that's so yeah. sick that's such like a massive leap yeah. and that's something most people don't really have the courage to do. So the fact that you guys actually made the leap and you just did it and you're happy and you're confident in the decisions you made, that's, that's such a beautiful story. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was crazy, man. We, we, uh, we packed up everything and we're, we're already super minimal. So we don't like a whole lot. And so, um, but it was very small at that time. I mean, having a twin XL bed and, uh, just a couple of our belongings in the car and driving through Canada for the first time was an experience that I'll never forget. We hit a, uh, a huge blizzard about halfway through our travel hmm. and we got snow block. Um, we were parked on the side of the road for essentially um, almost, I think it was like 10 hours. We had to wait out this storm. Oh my God. And uh, my phone had just like the auto populated GPS but everything around it was like blurry and had one little blue trail. So I didn't know where we were going. We didn't have a map. Um, so if that failed, then, you know, we wouldn't know where we were going. So definitely an experience that I don't, would never like to relive, but um, really cool experience. And so, so when we got to the last. Let me, let me cut ahead. you off for one second. So you're saying that it was such a big blizzard that and you couldn't literally see anything. So you were just following the blue line in the GPS. 
Pretty much. Yeah. Oh so my God. Oh, that's outrageous. <laughs> yeah. This that's is really crazy. Out of us, you know, more than, you know, five, 10 feet. So we're just like, you know, we're just going to keep trucking through. Um, we're going to hope for the best. We're going to get there. Um, we just had a lot of faith that, uh, you know, we were going to get here and everything was going to be safe. So once we landed here, um, as far as disc golf goes, you know, I went out and, you know, I was like, I want to really play in the winter. I just want to try it once. Um, but I got really discouraged because, you know, you go, you go out and play in the snow, especially out here in Alaska. It's very common for people to play in the snow here because winter is so much longer than summer. And uh, I'm head to toe in snow gear and I'm trying to trying to throw like I was throwing back in Oregon and nothing is working. Um my, you know, you can't get any any grip in your feet. Um, everything's super cold, so your body's really stiff. Um, and so it was really tough. And I, I told myself, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw the bag down. I'm not even going to try disc golf right now. And uh, I finished up on hole 18 at my local course. And as I'm walking back to T-Pad 1, there's a whole group of guys, uh, like 10 guys there. And they're all just chilling out in the middle of the snow. I was like, what are these guys doing? And... Uh, I approached them and they said, Hey man, um, how'd your round go? I was like, Oh, you know, it went okay. You know, I've never played in the snow before. So it was quite an experience. And they said, well, well this is Alaska, man. Like you got to play in the snow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course you have no, literally no other option if you want to play. Right. Right. So, um, I actually, you know, they asked me, Hey, you want to play another round? And so I got in with them and ended up these guys being some of my, my best buddies now. Um, and they have helped me develop as a player um some ways they they actually you know talked a little bit of smack to me to get me get me hmm. going a little bit more. um as as the casual you know disc golf group kind of is we all uh, we all kind of you know talk a little bit to each other and you know try to get each, under each other's skin during rounds but all for playing fun and um, just super cool experience to be able to meet those guys and uh it really just it put another fire in me kind of lit the fire even more um because I kept telling them my goals um, that I wanted to achieve, and all of them didn't really believe what I was going for. So, but uh, yeah, then that kind of made us kind of land where we're at and uh, helped me get to where I'm at. So, so tell me how how did it make you feel when you're just out playing disc golf and you run into a, a large group of disc golfers? You probably felt a little bit nervous at first, maybe out a little outclassed because you're inexperienced. How did it make you feel when they invited you to actually join them and play with them and become one of them? How, how did that make you feel? Oh man, I to, to be honest, I was on top of the world um, because I didn't think anybody really was playing disc golf up here because it just couldn't see anybody out there on the course. I mean, when it's that cold and you know that that frigid outside, it's like I would I would thought I was the crazy one being out there. There's no way that another person's going to be out playing disc golf. It's like I'm playing on like three feet of snow, man. Like there's no way. And so when I met these guys um, and I saw them out there, I was like, Oh man, like these guys obviously love this ball. Like they're taking, they're taking themselves out of a warm house somewhere that they can just like sit and just chill and have, have a good smooth night. And they want to come out and play this golf in the middle of the winter. So I was on top of the world. Um, definitely agree though. I was very nervous and, uh, a bit outclassed at that time for sure. I uh, I remember distinctly I got last in that round against all those guys, and I was like, man, I I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna <laughs> light that. It's gonna light that fire under your belly even more for the third time. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah, especially you know because you want to be the best amongst your group. I guess at least with the if you have a competitive spirit, and uh, I definitely do. I'm one of those people that always wants to win, um, but always tries to be happy and have fun while I'm doing it. So, yeah, it it was a good experience to meet those guys. Now, I I have your PDGA profile actually pulled up here, and I see that you've since September eighth ratings update twenty twenty till the most recent update uh, that you've been a part of October twelfth twenty twenty one just around a year out from one another you have come up from nine sorry sorry 763 rated to 887 rated so you've obviously been putting in the work and you've increased your rating 120 points in about a year's time 
what do you think was the biggest contributor to you uh, increasing your rating that much? And what would your advice be to new players? Because that's that's a really substantial jump. And you're playing in, I mean, I've played in the cold and the snow, and I know what that's like. But a lot of the people watching this video don't know what it's like to throw and it's negative 15 degrees and your disc is freezing. You think it's going to break. Your hand is numb. Like, how did you increase your rating by that much, even though you're playing in such difficult conditions? Yeah. So I guess I will I'll kind of clear the air a tiny bit. Um, you know, during the summer months, it, it, it does. The snow typically goes away. But there are in the beginning season of May. And definitely in the last part of the season in October, we definitely play in, in some snow. So in those conditions, it's quite tough, um, you know, because you don't like like I mentioned, you don't have grip and, you know, you're scared if you hit a tree, your disc is legit going to break apart. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny seeing a disc break for the first time. I, I threw a disc into a tree and it, it completely shattered. And uh, I was I was so shocked by that. I was like, I never thought that could ever happen. And so um, very different from my environment I was used to in Oregon when I first started. But um, yeah, during the summer months, you know, I, I just learned that you have to put in the work in order to, you know, make this your career. I started looking at guys that I really look up to in the sport, you know, Eagle McMahon, Simon Mazat, Calvin Heimberg, Ricky Wysocki, and um, of course, Paul McBeth. Um, but then you know, I started to watch some of the younger guys too, you know, Kyle Klein, Ezra Aderhold. Um, and those guys, they just have such a chip on their shoulder to be like some of the best players. And I tried to figure out what they're doing um, and the habits and the tendencies that they were doing in their disc golf journey. Um, and right from the start, I said, okay, I got to work from the ground up. Um, the best the best place to start is on the green. Um, so I started putting, um, ridiculous amount of putting uh, for – for five months straight, or five months straight, I I tracked all my putting sessions and uh, have it on my iPhone. It's just it goes forever in my notes. But uh, I've tracked over five months. I've done about forty eight thousand putts, and uh, it equates to about three to four hundred putts a day. And um, I did that for five months straight, um, and it it took so much, of, you know, so many days, so many hours of my life, but it's all been worth it for me. Um, you know, I want this to be my career and, you know, in, in classic, you know, ball golf quoting, they say, uh, you know, you drive for show and you cut for dough. Um, my dad taught that to me as a young kid. Um, my father has always been an athlete and especially with, uh, with golf, he uh, kind of was a local golfing pro where we were. And so always knew the terminology of golf. I've always kind of played around with ball golf, but, uh, yeah, it was just always kind of a cool thing to to hear that coming from my dad. You got you got to putt, Ty. You got to learn how to putt, and so <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I uh, and got got right to work. So. so you feel like putting is putting is the biggest thing that helped you gain a hundred, hundred twenty uh, PDJ rating points. That was the biggest factor for you because you you had you had a bit of the distance naturally, but it, so it was the short game that was holding you back, and you, you made some pretty major corrections. Oh, big time. Yeah, putting, putting. I think you know Calvin Heimberg. I heard him say it once on a video, and I think he said it best. You know, putting is the easiest thing to get better at, but it is the hardest thing to get better at. Um, and he, and I think when you really break that down, it's like it's it's just one repetition that you have to do multiple times. But at the same time, it's it's taking the time to go outside for two three hours a day and just consistently try to build that muscle memory where you're putting everything directly at the basket dead center um so it's a lot of time investment to get better putting you can go out you know and do field work for an hour and driving and typically get get a pretty decent idea of how to rip on the disc um but with putting you know you change micro inches, you know, millimeters off of your, your stance and it your disc flies very different. So um, it's tough, you know, putting is putting is one of those things that has made, you know, the best champions in the world where they're at. Um, Paul McBeth arguably would not be, you know, a five time champion if he wasn't one of the best putters on the planet. So Right, I, of course. I took, 
of course, of course. Yeah. And, you, and you said you, you said over those five months you did 48,000 putts. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. So about three to 400 a day um, usually kind of came out to about two, two and a half, three hours almost every session. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's, that's for, for the people listening, that's what being obsessed looks like. And that's what being obsessed sounds like. And if you want to get better and you want to gain ground on the competition, there's no better way than to be totally obsessed. That's so that's that's going to be motivating for so many people. And the results came in. You've you've improved so much, and you're going to continue to improve so much. Um, the next thing that I want to sort of move into: How did you and I get connected? So uh we're both on team Berg's bags. Can you explain the process of you meeting my dad? Yeah. So funny enough, I, uh, one of my, you know, one of the things I really wanted to do this year was to start a social media, uh, just about disc golf solely about my disc golf journey. Um, and so I got on Instagram and created an Instagram and just from, from the start, just wanted to get established. Um, so people could under, you know, see my content, understand who I was. And so I, uh, started just diving into you know posting really fun content that i really enjoyed and trying to get people more knowledge out there about you know how to become a professional and uh along the way um your father started to really show a lot of interest in my content and uh, i just loved that i thought it was super cool that you know somebody from all the way across the world is showing me some love you know and some support so i um i decided just to reach out you know I've, I've always kind of been one of those people that have always told myself, you miss 100% of the shots you never take. So um, I just reached out to Burst Bags, you know, your father, and um, I said, hey, you know, I, I'm a developing disc golfer here in, in Alaska. I've seen that you've liked some of my content and uh, have continuously supported me pushing content out. And uh, I just wanted to extend my gratitude towards that and really, really appreciate that. But I also asked them, you know, I was wondering if you guys sponsor anybody. Um, I'm looking for a bag sponsor next season. And uh, I would absolutely love and enjoy the opportunity to represent your guys' company on here in the Alaska, or Alaska Disc Golf scene. And so, uh, and I, I totally thought it was almost a bust. You know, I, I as a young guy who's only 23 and... Uh, who's pushing out content, but it was only got about, you know, 350 followers at that time. Um, I was like, there's no way. And uh, he ended up coming back and writing a really great message and telling me he would absolutely love to support my disc golf journey and give me a bag and um, let me represent the company. And so I was on top of the world. I, I woke up instantly and told my wife, and I was like, man, it, you know, babe, it's, it's, it's really happening. Like, things are really falling into place and I'm just so, so I couldn't be happier. You know, it, it's so, uh, so much gratitude towards Burbs bags and I'm um, really excited to represent them this next 2022 season. Yep. And definitely on, on behalf of my dad and on behalf of Burbs bags, we, we've talked about it as well. We're super happy to sponsor you. We're happy to sponsor Tai. You're, you're exactly what team Burbs bags is, is meant to be about. It's, the obsession, it's the passion, it's professionalism, and it's, you know, everything you put into it, Berg's Bag is going to do what they can to sort of support that moving forward. So, yeah, again, congratulations on that. That's really cool. And there's not a lot of people that can lock in a bag sponsor. So that says something really special about who you are as a person and what you're trying to do long term. So that's it's really amazing. And yeah, just welcome to the team. It's really cool. Thank you. <laughs> I absolutely, it's, it's been the, the first sponsor that I've, uh, you know, I have, I have two other sponsors for next season already locked in, but Burks Bags has been a very unique sponsor and um, you guys have shown a lot of love and a lot of support. So absolutely love it. It's been, it's been an awesome experience so far. And, and I'm going to plug your social media in the description of the video, but um, can you just tell people where they should follow you? I'm going to put that in the beginning and at the end of the video, uh, just so they know where to find your content. Yeah, yeah. So I solely do all my disc golf content on Instagram right now. So you can find me at Tai Relatus Disc Golf. Um, just jump over there, and uh, you'll be able to see lots of different things. I just put out a Mulligans challenge with one of my buddies from here in Alaska, and uh, it was 
it was quite entertaining for us, maybe not for all my viewers, but um, it was it was super fun to get out there and play around with him. Yep, so everyone go follow Tai, go support his dreams. He's got big dreams, he wants to be a pro, and we want to help support you in becoming that guy who achieves all your dreams. So go follow Tai and support his content. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about, you said you were around 350 pounds when you before you started playing disc golf and this is something i don't know how much you know about my dad but my dad is like shredded six pack like (laughs) athlete monster man like and that's like part of his personality is just he believes in work ethic and when he told me about you that was one of the things he told me about you was that like through disc golf you've effectively changed your life in so many different ways and that being one of them how did that sort of um coming down from 350 pounds how did you feel and how did you actually make that happen was it just through disc golf and and how are you feeling now now that you've shed so much yeah so total so far i have lost um 68 pounds and uh definitely i'd say a big motivator was disc golf Um, you know having Tons of people even to this day tell me that, you know, if I shed, if I shed some more weight, I'm going to be a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Definitely lights, lights the fire and puts the chip on my shoulder um, to do so. Um, Originally, I was just in such a dark place that it was really hard to understand that I have to have a healthy body, have a healthy mind. And in disc golf, you know, so much of the game is mental. Um, So I told myself that if I'm really going to make a stab in this in this field in this career i have to get i have to get healthy um you know the top disc golfers on the planet are some of the most in shape people um you know just like any pro athlete you're constantly doing stuff you not only just better yourself mentally um, but physically you got to be in peak shape to be able to perform so um knowing all of that going into disc golf i decided that i'm going to go to the gym every single day um, for five five to six months straight um, just not miss a day and I uh, started just going religiously being very active in the gym um, but then a, a huge aspect is when you're not in the gym you know when you're when you're at home and you have to worry about what you know what calories you're taking in um, and so I uh, I just started to look into like what are other disc golfers doing you know what are other fitness disc golfers doing um, it's kind of funny to say there's fitness disc golfers, but there's a lot of them out there. And, um, I would say, you know, arguably the fittest disc golfer I've ever, ever seen has to be Ezra Aderhold. That dude is ripped. And so I, um, I just started, you know, he came out with a couple of videos about what he eats and things that he, you know, takes into his body. And I started doing a little research into what he what he does, and I, I said, "Man, this this looks really easy, really doable." Um, so I made a video. It's very, it's pretty much in the beginning of my Instagram feed, um, but I pretty much said I'm going to try the Ezra Aderholt diet, and uh, and I didn't. It's not so much of a diet, just as much as a lifestyle. I guess diet's definitely one of those um, clickbait kind of things, but. Um, I really just changed my whole lifestyle. Um, started to eat eat less, but at the same time, just eat food that was really healthy for my body, um, and that really, really showed a huge difference. Um, compounding that with going to the gym every day and just uh, having having just really healthy habits really helped me to shed a ton of weight. And this winter, I'm trying to shed a whole lot more. I'm trying to go for 72 pounds. Um, this winter so i'll have about from now until next may the start of next season to try to get on that way off. and let me ask you this why do you think it is important to be in shape if you want to be a professional disc golfer because i think that is one of the most neglected aspects of the game we have our fitness guys but outside of those guys there's a lot of players that don't stay in the best shape and why do you think it's important if you want to play at the highest level to stay in shape? I would say it's just to be able to have the stamina and the the ability to be able to just perform at your your best. Um, I mean, you look at look at some of the most top players on the planet. 
Um, I mean, those guys are putting in so much time into the gym, so much time, um, so much time into just what they're eating. And I think, I think it's super important, you know, look, and you can definitely go even outside of disc golf and look at other sports as influence, you know, some of the best freak athletes are some of the most healthiest people. Um, and I think for disc golf alone, having a strong body, a strong mind, you know, helps so much, um, you know, mentally, this sport takes up you know, 90% of, of just your mental game. You have to be so mentally in it um, and not getting mad at, like, because you, you know, maybe through OB or through off, off your mark, you know, just saying, like, okay, it is what it is. You know, I'll get up and down and, you know, try to save my par. You know, having that attitude versus, like, oh, man, like every throw is off today. Or, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm victim to it. You know, I, I still struggle with it sometimes, but uh, – Going to the gym and eating right has definitely helped my scores drop. Um, I, I'd say at 350 pounds, I was not shooting, you know, 13, you know, 15, even like 11 on average, um, you know, down. And uh, it's it's definitely been a huge aspect that has helped my disc golf game. I always tell people that being in shape is not going to make you any worse, right? That's the most. It's not going to hurt your game getting in shape, right? Yeah, for sure. There's only o- only way to go is up from there. Um, so I, I think everything that you're that you've been through from when you started your disc golf career to, you know, playing through some really difficult conditions in Alaska and you said like playing in the warm months in Alaska is not like playing in the warm months in the rest of the world. It's still cold. It's yeah, still so different. Cold. So sure. your journey to actually get to Alaska and the amount of energy and spirit you've brought to disc golf you've locked in sponsorships you met my dad you locked in a bag sponsorship you locked in two other sponsorships i I just think it's so cool like where you started to where you are now the next question i have for you is what's next yeah what's next always a great question i get asked uh, from especially even my friends here but uh I've, uh, if what's funny is back in May, I wrote down the next six years of, uh, of disc golf for me. Um, all of my goals I want to accomplish within the next six years. Um, and so I guess year one, I decided uh, I'd have three goals. First one was just to um, establish a social media. Um, second one was to win my first MA1 tournament. tournament win my first MA1 tournament. And then uh, my third was to get over 900 rated. I have three tournaments that I competed in in October that haven't been accounted towards my rating just yet. So I'm hoping that 887 will go up to like a nine, a 905, a 910, somewhere in there. Um, and I've, I competed pretty well to, to end off my season. But uh, year, year two of disc golf, you know, going into the 2022 season, um, I might have to grab my journal. Cause I can't, I don't, I don't remember all my goals that I wrote down just yet, but, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's about five or six goals, but if I grab it, I'll, I'll be able to let you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. And you and I are obviously going to continue chatting beyond this interview. We're, we're teammates at this point. I represent Berg's bags down here on the opposite side of the country in South Florida. You're representing Berg's bags all the way up in Alaska. So we've got the two corners covered, which is really cool. Um, before we got on the phone call, I asked you to grab a couple of discs. Do you have a couple of discs with you? Yes, I do. So my, um, I have the molds that I like to throw. I left my bag at work, um, but these are probably my three favorite molds that I have. Um, and I guess I'll just start off with my putting putter and kind of just go to my driver. I have a mid in here as well. Um, my favorite putting putter is an AGL Manzanita. Um, AGL is based out of San Jose, California. Um, they're produced, uh, I believe all their plastic is made from gateway and, uh, this blend, especially the, their putter blend has just been phenomenal in my hand. It feels so great. It gives me the confidence every time coming up to the basket to make my birdie putts or, you know, complete my putts. Um, but it's just an overstable, um, slightly overstable putter, flight numbers three, three, zero, two absolutely love this disc um also great for approach shots as well and then uh i've recently you know since developing an arm to be able to throw some you know massive distance these days at least for my skill level and how long i've been playing 
Um, I've been trying to get into a lot more overstable stuff. So uh, my favorite mid is a uh, MVP Pyro, um, specifically in Neutron Plastic. This disc is so hard to get a hold of right now. Um, I'm so happy I bought these like in the beginning of my disc golf journey because um, I bagged one and this one just sits on the wall because it's too pretty to throw. <laughs> um, but yeah, flight numbers for that is a 5402.5. Quite overstable. Um, most people would definitely call it a meat hook, um, but it's uh, it's been a really reliable, overstable mid range for myself. And I, I've been able to push this 400 feet. Um, and just get really good, um, really consistent fade at the very end. And then uh, for my big distance drivers, when I'm really trying to get close to that 500 mark, um, I'm throwing a D2 Max from Prodigy. I've kind of filtered what my distance driver was from a DD3 to a Destroyer to a Wraith. And something about the D2 Max has always just felt really good in my hand. Um, the profile of it is pretty skinny, so I feel like I can get a lot of a lot of grip on it. Um, but yeah, I can mash a V2 Max. I think the other day I went out to the field and threw 485. Um, so it's it's definitely been a workhorse in my bag. It, it helped me win my first tournament, um, and yeah, it's been been one of my favorite discs by far. Hell yeah, those are some. I I, I really like that you're. I'm I'm similar to you, and I enjoy throwing some molds that not everybody likes to throw. My favorite sure. disc has been the Castaplast Berg, and it's okay. when I first got one of those, nobody knew what it was. I've been throwing the same orange Berg. It's all warped and disgusting looking since 2018, and is one of the first discs I've ever owned. I love that you're throwing an AGL disc that a lot of people haven't seen before. So if you haven't, okay. you say what's it called again? It is the AGL Manzanita. Manzanita. Um, yeah, it's a beetles putter. Sort of, uh, sort of flies pretty similar to like a P PA2 from Prodigy or like a Luna from Discraft. Um, personally, think it's better than both, but uh, my that's my controversial take. So, <laughs> <laughs> the hot takes. Everybody loves a good hot take. So, if you haven't thrown the AGL Manzanita, go check one out. It's Ty's favorite putter. It's the go-to. Yeah, I'd actually love to grab my journals real quick um, and definitely go over my my 2022. Uh, my goals for next year because I think they're pretty unique and they're way above what I'm at right now. Um, and I think that if anybody's out there like me, that you know you're setting the bar really high for yourself. I just want them to know that you know do it. Um, it gives you goals that are very achievable, but at the same time you got to put the work in. And I think uh, it can resonate with a lot of people. So I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, go grab whatever you need to do. I meant to grab this before, and I think this is a really good thing. I. Uh, I think everybody in disc golf should definitely have a journal. Um, it's just one of those things for at least myself. I've been able to go back to it and really refer to it, especially in those times that I really doubted myself. Um, and it's really, it's really been really cool to kind of go back to it and be like, Oh my gosh, I, I'm so close to completing this goal. And I never even thought it was achievable. So um, just to go over it again, my year one goals was to get a social media started when my first MA one tournament and then get to 900 rated, which, here at November 9th, if uh, you know this video is out before that, check back into my PDJ, and uh, I'll probably post about it on my Instagram as well. I'm, I'm really, really pretty, really excited to see if I get over 900. So, um, year two goals, guys. Um, my I have five of them. Uh, my first goal is to get over a thousand followers. Um, you know, I not it's not just for myself. I really want to be able to bring a light to many other people. Um, and just show that uh, somebody who has been through so much and who's struggling, um, you know, with their weight and their, their mental health, I think I'm going to be pushing out a lot of content that can help a lot of people, especially in my age. Um, and, you know, just to be able to have, you know, a, a sort of a small following will really help with that. My second goal is to play all MPO next season, um, not play a single MA1 tournament. Um, just really try to push up to that pro level um, and just be able to get to play some of the best, especially here in Alaska. We have some phenomenal players. Um, I'm I'm probably be arguably um, I play with one of the best disc golfer in all of Alaska, um, and he he keeps telling me, man, you got to you got to move up to open, dude. Uh, you 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 put you out putt everybody in the state. Um, he's like, even for one year, you you're already 
surpassed where I was in one year. Um, you're way ahead of the curve, so you need to jump up the open. So I made that a goal for myself. Uh, three, my third goal is to uh, putt over 100,000 times in training. Um, I definitely already know it's doable um, just by you know completing what I've already done. Um, but I've made it a huge goal that that putting has to be such a foundational aspect to to better my game and i think it's going to be able to help me win my first open tournament next season um fourth goal is to play 25 to 30 tournaments i uh i'm going to try to play every tournament here in alaska and a couple out of state um, notably i really want to go to hawaii state championships i have uh i've been to Kauai where it's hosted and i think it'd absolutely be a blast to go and play that course very tropical very beautiful um, but I want to get my name out there a little bit more. I want to be able to get the, the experience that some of the local pros or even some of the West Coast touring you know, professionals do. They play a lot of tournaments. Um, you know, notably, I, I, uh, I really enjoy watching some of the younger Oregon disc golf players. Paul Rodolin played about 30 tournaments this year, and he, he was just a force to be reckoned with. So i seen what those guys are doing. I definitely want to do the same. And uh, my fifth goal final is to get as close to a thousand rated as possible um i know that thousand rated sounds very huge um it almost sounds impossible but i've seen what i've been able to do in the little time that i have i've been playing the sport and i think i i think i'm that guy that really has the drive to be to be able to actually do it so yeah some pretty huge goals for next season um definitely gonna have a handful uh, to, to try to, to complete and achieve. But uh, if there's anyone out there that resonates with that, you know, feel free to, you know, reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you guys. I'd love to even do, you know, some, some content with other creators and maybe, you know, review some people's uh, footage and such. But uh, I have a couple videos coming out um, here shortly about putting, about how, you know, how I'm, how good I am after one year of playing and, uh, also working with a good buddy of mine who's just starting in disc golf and just giving him some beginner tips, things that I've learned along the way and maybe help, you know, some bad habits not to start. So, yeah. You know, you know what I like about your goals is that your first goals is to put in the work. Your goal is to play MPO. It's to do a hundred thousand putts. It's to, but the last thing you said is to become a thousand rated. So you are already perfectly aware that the goal is to put in the work and the thousand rated is the result that comes from putting in the work. You didn't say I want to become a thousand rated first. You, that's at the end of the list because all the other things are scientifically designed to get you there. So I think you, you have your head on straight and if you lay those goals out properly and you set a realistic way for you to attack each one day by day, there's no reason you can't become a thousand rated and there's there's no there it's it's good to have big goals you have big dreams in disc golf and you want to be a pro player and you want to do it quickly and you're willing to put in the work that's that it's i can tell you have a sense of urgency and you you want to put in the work and you want to get where you want to be and it doesn't seem like anyone's going to be able to stop you oh, no. yeah definitely. <laughs> i uh definitely not quitting disc golf anytime soon i uh i have you know major goals year five year six that i'm sure you and i will talk about you know, in the future, um, you know, winning, winning majors and hopefully being world champions. So um, definitely year one has been a great experience. Um, and it's taught me a lot, but I have so much more growth. So. Yep. I love that for you. And I, I believe in each and every goal you set for yourself, as long as you're willing to put in the work, no goal is too big. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. So uh, before we just say goodbye and everything, is there any last final things you want to say? I just want to, you know, first off, just say thank you, Dylan, for you know this interview and uh, taking the time out of your day. I know it's pretty late there in Florida, so thank you a lot. Um, it's it's such a fun experience, and I really enjoyed the time we've had here to be able to talk to each other and Iceberg TV. You know, all my followers that are watching, you know, please go and show us some love and some support. Um, huge, huge thank you to Berg's Bags, especially um, for the opportunity to. Really to be able to represent your company this 2022 season. And, uh, yeah, just thank you guys for tuning in and watching. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed it and uh, hope we get to talk more and get to see a little bit more of each other. So. Yep, definitely. We're, we're going to continue to keep in touch 
And thank you for coming on the channel. And everybody who sees this, make sure you go follow Tai on Instagram. I'll put the link in the description below and I'll also put it up on the screen so you can go follow him, support his goals. He's going to be a big name in disc golf in the next couple of years. And we're going to see him out at a lot more tournaments. So you definitely want to pay attention to what's going on. With all that being said, you are watching Iceberg TV and take care.